Wuhan resumed some public transit on Wednesday, and in two weeks, the city's lockdown will be partially lifted. But can life really return to normal for Wuhan residents? A viral post on Chinese social media shows crowds lining up outside a funeral home in Wuhan to pick up ashes of those who died during the virus outbreak. Several young Chinese living overseas are breaking their silence, calling for the Chinese Communist Party to be held responsible for mishandling the pandemic. This evil party, this evil Chinese Communist Party, must be overthrown. And millions have lost their jobs due to the CCP virus. More than three million Americans have filed for unemployment, and the Senate late last night unanimously passing a two trillion dollar stimulus package to offer relief to those impacted by the virus. Chinese state media has been quoting an Italian expert to suggest the virus came from Italy. Now the Italian expert is pointing out the virus came from China. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Chinese authorities are now telling people to go back to work, but people from Hubei Province say they are being discriminated against because if they leave the province for work, they are forced to self-quarantine at their own expense. But people from other provinces aren't. Hubei is the hardest-hit area of China. Hubei residents returning to work in Guizhou were forced into quarantine for two weeks, according to activist Yang Jiangqin. This has happened to thousands of people. People who have already recovered also face discrimination. Tsai Xingnet tells the story of 70-year-old Mr. Li from Wuhan. He was infected with the CCP virus but recovered and was released from hospital on February 14th. He says when his neighbor saw him, he ran away out of fear. Community staff and hospital security also asked him to stay away. Even when he went onto his own balcony, his neighbors reported him, saying he was appearing in public spaces. According to a doctor in China, after the CCP virus patient is cured at the hospital, the virus is only hidden, and the disease may recur at any time. The hospital's medical treatments only suppress the virus and can't eliminate it. But the patients who didn't take medicine and recovered on their own will develop antibodies that prevent them from being infected again. And NTD has obtained photos revealing the situation inside China. Wuhan and Beijing are both under the highest security measures. Beijing is still under a partial lockdown. People from many regions are not allowed to enter the city. According to one source, on March 25th, activity in Beijing increased, even though the entrances are still blocked. Many places now have automatic thermometers. As people walk by, their temperature is measured. It's the same at supermarkets. Chinese state media has been quoting an Italian expert to suggest that the CCP virus comes from Italy. Now the Italian expert is pointing out the virus came from China. Chinese state media claim a quote by an Italian doctor suggests the virus may have started in Italy. The doctor Giuseppe Ramuzzi told NPR local doctors on March 19th remembered seeing very strange pneumonia, very severe, particularly in old people, in December and even November. Chinese state media Global Times then released an article titled "Italian Expert Says Italian Outbreak Precedes China." The story was picked up by other Chinese media and soon went viral, with many believing this proved the virus originated outside China. Ramuzzi has since responded, saying the Chinese media twisted his words. An Italian outlet, Il Foglio, quoted Ramuzzi's response as saying, "There is no doubt the virus came from China." He added that this was a textbook example on how scientific information can be manipulated for propaganda reasons. What he actually meant was that because China had not released information about the virus earlier, Italy was not prepared to deal with it. He believes the virus originated in Wuhan back in October, but authorities covered it up. To back up his claim, he cited Nature Medical Journal, who say the virus strain likely originated in bats and pangolins, which are sold at the Wuhan seafood market. He says the virus then made it to Italy after infecting a German person who contracted the virus from a Chinese person, as documented in the New England Journal of Medicine. 
Chinese state-run media has been changing previous English language reports online. Reports that originally said Wuhan pneumonia have now been changed to say unknown pneumonia associated with coronavirus. A quick search on WeChat and Weibo revealed only a few celebrities using that term. All media reports using the term Wuhan pneumonia have now disappeared. Pictures leaked on China's online social network show a funeral home in Wuhan. People line up to collect the ashes of relatives and friends who died during the outbreak. The pictures were quickly deleted after post went viral. NTD Xu and Rong has the story. Wuhan locked down its city for more than two months. Recently, funeral homes opened their doors for people to pick up the ashes of their relatives who died during the pandemic. On March 26, a netizen in China posted pictures on a Chinese social networking platform showing the front of a funeral home in Wuhan. The pictures continue to circulate on Twitter after the platform deleted the original post. The photos show a crowd of people lining up outside the funeral home and a sign saying, pick up the ashes of relatives who died during the epidemic. In a recent tweet, a netizen says there were many security guards closely monitoring the scene and undercover police were everywhere. A staff member from Wuchang Funeral Home told us even if people make it to the home, they might have to wait in long lines. It depends on the number of people. This morning, many people came. We contacted a person in charge of a funeral home and asked about the situation. To pick up the family's ashes, they must be notified by the Hankou Funeral Home. If they haven't been notified, they can't pick them up. He continued that for now, this will happen in phases because it is too much to handle all at once. A Wuhan resident told us his friend went to pick up their relative's ashes and saw the same situation and said they also had to wait to register at the cemetery. While the official numbers of death in Hubei is more than 3,000, a Wuhan resident tells a different story. There are so many people at the cemetery. How many are there in reality? Definitely not 3,000 people. Adding another zero or two zeros is also possible. A netizen said in a tweet, someone even lined up for three hours but still couldn't register. During the outbreak in the epicenter, the death toll from the CCP virus in Wuhan received attention around the world. As NTD previously reported, evidence is mounting that the Chinese regime is covering up the real numbers. In an undercover investigation by NTD in February, a funeral home official said even 24 hours a day isn't enough to handle all the bodies. The amount of bodies we transport and cremate are four to five times more than usual. The actual death toll in Wuhan remains a mystery even today. Reporting by Xu Rong, NTD News. Several Chinese expats are posting videos demanding the Chinese Communist Party be held accountable for mishandling the virus pandemic. NTD's Juliet Song reports. The Chinese Communist regime is launching a disinformation campaign floating theories that the CCP virus began in the United States. Several overseas Chinese, mainly younger people, are speaking out against the propaganda. This virus originates from China. There is no doubt of it. They're apologizing to the U.S. and infected patients. They're also calling for the Chinese Communist Party to be held accountable. In the name of Lord Jesus, I sincerely apologize to pneumonia victims infected by Chinese virus. I encourage all the governments and all the people of the world take a combined action to hold the Chinese Communist Party and Chinese government responsible for this virus outbreak. This government, this evil party, this evil Chinese Communist Party must be overthrown. And I think the Chinese government should pay the cost and should pay huge amount of compensation to America. One of them is Mr. Kong, a student doing his PhD in the U.S. Kong said he wants to apologize after seeing the Chinese regime attempting to blame the U.S. for the virus. I think as a Chinese, whether in the mainland or I think as Chinese, we should speak out, whether in the mainland or overseas, because staying quiet doesn't mean you are not responsible, right? I think people should speak up. By staying silent, you are allowing the Chinese Communist Party to do its evil deeds. He believes public opinion has immense power. 
Something that nothing will change, even if I say anything, it won't change society in any way. But I think if every person can speak up, that will make a difference. Kong said many people think they don't have any responsibility since they aren't officially in power or themselves party members. He hates thinking like this. He wants to apologize for their silence, and he said he wants those who watch his video to reflect on whether staying silent is in some way wrong. Some Chinese netizens left negative comments under the posted videos. Others are applauding. One Twitter user said, Thank you, sir. I hope more people can be like you. Another Twitter user said, The Chinese regime should apologize, not the people. Why should we apologize? It's the CCP that should apologize instead of us, who are victims of the party. Reporting by Juliet Song, NTD News, New York. Some public transit has resumed in Wuhan, and the city's lockdown will be partially lifted in two weeks. But residents are still fearful there could be another outbreak. Wuhan resumed some public transport on Wednesday so that people could get back to work and restart the economy. Over 100 bus routes were restarted, and six railway lines will be restarted on Saturday. Other areas of Wuhan's province also partially lifted lockdowns on Wednesday. And so on April 8th, Wuhan's 11 million people will be allowed to leave the city again if they pass certain health checks. But for Wuhan residents, life hasn't returned to normal. They even fear another outbreak has already started. Our sister media, the Epoch Times, talked to one resident, Mr. Goa, last Saturday. To protect his identity, we are using a pseudonym and his voice has been distorted. It started again. It was reported yesterday that in our Tiaoko district, Tongji Hospital had over 100 cases, but they didn't dare report them. Because of censorship inside China, we have not been able to independently verify the claim, but recently leaked files show the real number of cases could be 20 times higher than official numbers. Goa said he lives in fear every day that something as devastating as January's outbreak could happen again. On Chinese social media, a Wuhan doctor warned that even after the lockdown is lifted, residents shouldn't go out. She gave three pieces of advice. One, stock up on food and necessities. Two, take care of the elderly and get their medicine as soon as possible. And three, refuse any visitors, even close relatives. But as the lockdown has already gone on for two months already, residents in Wuhan barely have enough to survive and need to make money. It's already been 59 days and we've only received one fish. Are we supposed to get by with this one fish for 59 days? So Goa has a dilemma. If he goes out, he risks infection. But if he doesn't, his wife and child won't have anything to eat since they've been under lockdown for two months without earning money. He said he'd rather risk getting infected since he needs to look after his family. Virus test kits sent from China to the Czech Republic have been found to serve limited use. The tests often give false results if used within the first week after infection, making high rates of misdiagnosis possible. In the Czech Republic, local healthcare workers found that up to 80 percent of the tests sent by China give false results, making them highly unreliable. A medical official said the test error rate was quite high. The rapid testing kits offer a quicker diagnosis, taking just 25 minutes to reveal a result. The tests previously used in Czechia take much longer, with a wait time of six hours. But the gift from China did not live up to healthcare workers' expectations. The tests produce false positive as well as false negative results. They are unable to reliably detect the virus in the first five to seven days from infection, limiting the usefulness of these tests. A document from the Czech National Institute of Public Health states that tests can only play a supportive role in virus testing and are not to be used for diagnosis. Misdiagnosis could have dangerous consequences, such as risking the health of those tested and others by applying the wrong precautions. A patient testing negative when they're actually infected could result in the widespread infection of others. The 150,000 tests arrived in a Czech special army plane just over a week ago from the Chinese city of Shenzhen. The tests were quickly distributed to police, soldiers and firefighters, as well as big hospitals. Media outlet Taiwan News reported that China did not donate the tests to Czech Republic, although China state media made it sound that way, by failing to mention that they profited from the transaction. In fact, Czechia paid for the tests. 
And in New York City, 13 patients sick with the virus have died within 24 hours. These patients passed away at Elmhurst Hospital in Queens. And a hospital spokesperson said in his own words, the death are consistent with a number of ICU patients being treated there. NTD's Melina Weisskopf has more from the hospital. In just a span of 24 hours, over a dozen people have died at this hospital from the CCP virus. Governor Cuomo said hospitals will be overwhelmed. And that's why we're literally adding to the hospital capacity every way we can. He has already asked hospitals to increase their bed capacity by 50 percent. Officials are also scouting new sites to add facilities with over 1,000 beds each. An Elmhurst healthcare worker told NTD that any patient that is not a COVID-19 patient has been transferred to other hospitals and that having enough stretchers has always been an issue for them. But now the shortage is even more evident. But it's not only the hospitals that are overwhelmed. The EMS is also experiencing an unusually high call volume. In the last three days, well over 6,000. Last night was 6,500 calls, which uh, is a record for us. To give you a little perspective, it's more than 9-11. He is advising people to refrain from calling 911 unless they're experiencing more severe symptoms. If you spike a fever for an extended period of time, if you develop shortness of breath, uh, you start to lose your mental status a little. Call us. I'm here in New York City at Elmhurst Hospital, which the health department now considers the center of the crisis. There was a long line of people behind these barricades earlier waiting to get tested for COVID-19, and they actually had to stop testing at a certain point because they ran out of tests. But despite reports of healthcare workers not having enough protective gear, Governor Cuomo said they still have enough for the foreseeable future. Melina Weisskopf, NTD News, New York. New York has 6,500 more cases of the CCP virus since last night. Now the statewide total is over 37,000, but the governor said the social distancing seems to be working since the number of hospitalizations went from doubling every two days to now doubling every four days. And across the U.S., jails in several states are releasing inmates to reduce the spread of virus in jails. Officials are calling the releases humane, but critics say the measure is a danger to public safety. NTD's Miguel Moreno has more. Los Angeles County, New York City and several other places have begun releasing inmates to stop the spread of coronavirus in jails. Thousands have been released. New York City started releasing hundreds of inmates this week convicted of low-level and nonviolent offenses who have less than one year of their sentence left. When we looked at that category of people, uh, there's over 500 uh, inmates in that category. Uh, there is a substantial group uh, that, uh, because of very specific legal issues, uh, I'm not able to immediately release. But not everyone is happy with the idea of releasing inmates for obvious reasons. The Correction Officers Union was disappointed with the decision, saying that it turns a public health crisis into a public safety crisis. And the founder of Blue Lives Matter NYC said the plan's not bulletproof, but he said it would be a smart idea to stop the virus from coming in. There's a lot of people that come in and out of the jail system every day. People are released and people are incarcerated. So there's a good chance that it, it may not have been a visitor or a worker. It could have been an individual that was brought into jail today that wasn't there yesterday that all of a sudden started infecting people. The Correction Officers Union and council members are asking the mayor to set up a testing facility in Rikers Island to test workers and officers and to thoroughly screen them every day. The Wall Street Journal reported on Wednesday that 50 inmates at Rikers have tested positive for the virus. Miguel Moreno, NTD News, New York. And in the U.S., $2 trillion. That's the figure put on a stimulus bill unanimously passing through the Senate late last night. The funds will go towards helping unemployed workers and major American industries hit by the virus pandemic. The bill is passed. The U.S. Senate unanimously passed a $2 trillion stimulus bill on Wednesday, aimed at helping unemployed workers and industries hurt by the coronavirus pandemic, as well as providing billions of dollars to buy urgently needed medical equipment. The divided Senate came together to vote 96 to 0. I'm proud to announce tonight not a single senator voted against this $2 trillion rescue bill to save American individuals, small businesses, large businesses, and to provide considerable funding for the healthcare workers and the scientists and the doctors 
and others who are trying to solve this pandemic. It's the largest rescue package in American history. Included in the stimulus package, direct payments of up to $3,000 to U.S. families, up to $500 billion for distressed industries, including hard-hit airlines. And so when we pass this bill on the floor of the Senate, we didn't hug each other, we just waved from a distance. It is intended to flood the economy with cash to stem the impact of an intensifying pandemic that has killed more than 900 people in the United States and infected at least 60,000. Trump also told reporters on Wednesday he would sign it into law as soon as it reached his desk. And earlier this month, the Pentagon froze most domestic travel for service members, civilian employees and family members. The order remains in effect until May 11th. The freeze works in both directions. Troops who are supposed to come home will now have to wait. And the same is true for military personnel in the U.S. who are scheduled to deploy overseas. The new order will not impact the continued drawdown of U.S. forces from Afghanistan. It's scheduled to be complete within 135 days following the signed agreement. In all, the freeze is expected to affect about 90,000 service members. But there are several exceptions to the freeze. Most notably, naval vessels scheduled to return to the U.S. will sail as planned. And additional exceptions may be granted on a case-by-case -case basis. The Defense Department is also raising the military's health protection level to its second highest stage. The effort aims to slow the spread in its ranks and apply to all military installations globally. The G20 held an emergency meeting today to discuss the CCP virus outbreak. The group of 20 countries is composed of the world's biggest economies. G20 leaders meet via teleconference today. Saudi Arabia, this year's chair, called the meeting to discuss the pandemic. President Trump joined from the Situation Room, flanked by the Treasury Secretary and the White House's chief economic advisor. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is in self-quarantine. He appeared from home. The group agreed to inject $5 trillion to help prop up the global economy. It's unclear how exactly it will be done. The nations also made several other pledges. They committed to share timely and transparent information, including the exchange of health data. China is a G20 member but has failed to be transparent during the outbreak. To tackle the global shortage of personal protective equipment for medical workers, the group called for increased production and availability. The global supply chain is also a concern. The group wants to ensure the flow of vital medical supplies and agricultural products. The leaders say Africa and other smaller island nations are at particular risk. Their health care systems may need support. The details on how the group will meet these commitments are not yet known. Reporting by Paul Greeny, NTD News. And moving on to a record-breaking number of jobless claims. So far, over 3 million Americans have filed for unemployment. NTD's Miguel Moreno has more. The CCP virus has ravaged businesses across the nation. And the latest government data shows that more than 3 million Americans have filed for unemployment. That's nearly 12 times the level it was the previous week. But the Department of Labor said the record-shattering number was expected considering the temporary shutdown. The report said nearly every state providing comments cited the COVID-19 virus impacts broadly affecting the hospitality and food services industry. However, the department also pointed to relief for American workers and businesses. A $2 trillion stimulus package backed by the Senate will be sent to the House to vote on this Friday. And despite several sources expecting many more jobs lost, the department is hopeful the relief package will help spring the economy to where it was just weeks ago. Miguel Moreno, NTD News, New York. And a surge of CCP virus cases in Louisiana. The state has now reported 65 deaths and about 1,800 infected. One study says it has the fastest growth rate of confirmed cases worldwide, with New Orleans on track to be the next hotspot for the virus in the U.S. A study finds that Louisiana has the fastest growth rate of COVID-19 cases, putting the Big Easy on pace to become the next epicenter of the virus. Quite sadly, the number of cases in Louisiana continues to rise uh, more drastically than we would like. The governor says if predictions are correct, hospitals in New Orleans may exceed their health care capacity in about 10 days. 
Meanwhile, companies are pitching in to support areas affected by the virus. Shipping company FedEx says it's staying in operation despite the lockdowns, as it's deemed an essential business. We are moving we found pharmaceuticals, we're moving medical equipment, uh, any kind of uh, personal protection equipment, uh, of course, test kits, and so on. So it's a, we're doing a, a lot of work right now. The company stands to benefit from the $2 trillion stimulus bill, now awaiting a House vote and the president's signature that would offer $4 billion in grants to pay workers at cargo carriers. And fast food giant McDonald's is suspending all-day breakfast amid the pandemic. The company says it's doing so to simplify things in the kitchen as the virus strains day-to-day -day operations. This after McDonald's closed all dining and play areas in its restaurants last week. But the company says pulling all-day breakfast is only temporary and plans to bring it back. NBC Universal CEO Jeff Schell says he has been diagnosed with the coronavirus. As the number of infections keep rising in Europe, one hospital in Spain has been hit worse than the rest. Spain's lockdown was extended until at least April 12th. Over 600 people have died in 24 hours alone. One hospital is hit especially bad, with over 600 patients in its emergency unit, which is designed for 60. Coffins are loaded into funeral cars at the hospital, while hospital staff carry new patients into the emergency unit. In order to tackle this looming shortage, France has moved around 20 patients from the eastern part of the country to the west. The idea is to move patients from the regions that are being hit hardest to the rest of the country where the hospital capacity is still high. And different countries require different actions to keep people inside. The mayor of a small French town has forbidden people from buying only one baguette at a time. Instead, they have to buy a handful at once and freeze them since a trip to the bakery was a major reason for leaving the house on a daily basis. An award-winning restaurant owner, Chris Shepard, is feeling the economic impact of the virus. His four restaurants in Texas have become one, and he's granted leave to much of his staff. But he's changed his menu to suit the circumstances and is focused on reopening again once the outbreak passes. As fewer people risk going out, even the country's top restaurants are struggling. Award-winning chef Chris Shepard has been forced to consolidate four of his Houston restaurants into one. And instead of the steakhouse's usual high-end dining experience, he's now only serving takeout. Normally our entrees are $38. We're selling everything at like 12 bucks, 14 bucks. So trying to keep it affordable. We're doing things we've never done before. I've never put chicken tenders and mac and cheese in a to-go container and, and done that, right? I've never made King Ranch chicken before. Guess what? We're doing it. Meatloaf like crazy. As revenue dropped, Chris was forced to lay off most of his staff, but he hasn't forgotten about them. To make up for lost wages, he's cooking up a daily house meal to feed them. We're not doing this to make money. Like, we're doing this to make sure that we can pay the bill so that this restaurant and all of our restaurants are there for when this is over, that they can come back to work too. Economists say restaurants begin feeling the pinch first and hardest. And while Chris and his team do everything they can to stay afloat, He's seen other local restaurants who've given up the fight. I don't know. I don't know how long we can withstand this. I, I don't know. I mean, we have to make a certain number every day just to keep the lights on, so. But hope may be on the horizon for Chris, as Congress finalizes a relief bill for small businesses, and the president hints at opening up the economy sooner rather than later. Here at China in Focus, we bring you first-hand information from inside China. Don't forget to subscribe for the latest updates.